This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. And we have been doing so much fun stuff with SDR. We've actually gotten a lot of good feedback about We've it. We've got two concurrent series going on right now, our SDR series and our drone series. And we're right. going to see both of those converge with a whole bunch of other really cool technology. And I figured today we're going to continue failing forward. Continue failing we're gonna, forward. We fail <laughs> on a weekly basis, which is why we're ahead. We don't necessarily the, fail every week, but we, we learn from the we, different things that we've been researching. And if this was our mistakes. first episode, it would be worse than if it were, as it is now, coming up on our ninth year. Oh Can you believe gosh, that? DEF CON. So we hope to see you at DEF CON. We're going to have we awesome have a party. party. Yeah, yeah, awesome yes. party. Yes, for awesome. sure. So details forthcoming. But So why don't we get right into it with the feedback? Yes, we have a ton of feedback, uh, both between some of the, what was it, ADSB stuff we were doing and some of the right. other radios. So you want to take it away? Take the first one? Yes. Okay. So this one comes from Inuyasha, and he said the auto gain for the RTL SDR is still a little buggy, so the best way to get good performance is to use manual gain. The best way to configure the gain needed in your location is to first tune to the ADSB frequency using SDR Sharp, then in the settings for your SDR, adjust the gain manually until you either notice the floor noise floor increase slightly or some ADSB signals start to clip, whichever comes first. Once you get that, make not make Make note. note of the gain used and set the ADSB application to use that gain. Here in New York, doing this has taken the time, the frame rate from around 150 to well over 400 using the stock antenna. Wow, and pretty much centered between frame. three different airports. The okay. two closest being that AFK explains and LPA. it. That's that's an amazing frame rate, and yeah. we have actually discovered the, exactly what you're talking about here. It is. It's not the greatest, but then again, we're talking about a $20 radio dongle that was That's meant to true. pick up TV stations and you can also use to do all of this other stuff. So yeah. it's a small price to pay, but I think it's something to note yes, for sure. Definitely. And we're going to take that into account today when we uh, try this again. We're not, oh. we're not at an altitude of 3,800 feet. We're no. actually pretty close to sea level, in fact but uh, we're still gonna have a good test. Okay, cool. Uh, I got one here. I have one here from Chris. And Chris writes to say, hey guys, I've got a couple of thoughts on your ADSB test. One, I think that much beyond eight links in your antenna would be fairly fruitless due to the cable loss from which the antenna is composed of. Yes, in fact, we are now down to simply two elements in our coaxial collinear. Um, like this is where the rubber meets the road yeah, in radio absolutely. all the time is like theoretically yes if we have 16 segments it's going to be awesome if we got 32 segments it's going to be banging however much over the longer a, it gets you get a little bit less you get more noise the larger it gets. yeah it's it's just all, problems all around so we're going to keep it simple <laughs> uh two 400 feet is really pushing it for wi-fi without good directional antennas ah. which we have here on our pineapple <laughs> drone and we're going to be using a yagi udin array <laughs> on the ground station good call it's starting to look a little ridiculous it is uh <laughs> two, three the side of the van makes an excellent reflector ah. which will provide some gain for some instances which may be why when the drone was lower and in front of the van we were picking up a lot of stuff and then once we got it's into the sky possible. nothing it's it was one closer of, too. one of Distance. many reasons in fact which yeah. we will get to uh, so all really good stuff and then fourth um, Chris points out that the drones high current motors and their electronic circuits which he assumes work under PWM or pulse width modulation, and yes, they do, uh, make a lot of EMI or electromagnetic interference, ah. and that would reduce the sensitivity of this software-defined radio. Okay. And he further goes on to explain that it's a very wideband dongle. Like we've said, this, is, yeah. this dongle is mainly used to pick up uh, digital TV broadcasts. Right. However, it also happens to be very wide. It's, I forget the, the frequency range, something like, what, 60 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz? That's really, really wide. And so what we would be better off doing is having a bandpass filter in place. And that would reject everything that's not around 1090 megahertz. Ah, okay. So we can say, like, I'm only interested in this frequency. You know, everything Ignore else can everything GTFO. Else. Yeah, yeah, right. So thank you, Chris. That's cool. Okay, ready for the next one? Yes. All right. So this one follows along with that. Uh, this is from... Comey, and he says, hey everybody, 
Just think about why you lost the signal from the airplanes when the drone took the antenna up in the air. My questions would be, A, was it caused by the drone changing its position into the air? B, or was it caused by the distance between the drone and the laptop getting farther? C, or is there any chance that the drone's control signal interfered in any way? Or D, how about the dr drone's uh, gyro and motors being more active and interfering higher in the sky? If it's B, you can experiment by moving the laptop away from the drone. By drone, I mean the DGI, DGI and the Wi-Fi Pineapple plus RTL, SDR, and antenna without launching the drone. You can then pick up the laptop and start walking away from it to see mm, if the number of signals point. drop. Very good point. And as for C, so that one's about the drone's control signal interfering, you can keep the drone hovering right next to the laptop while walking away with the drone controller. So you could actually figure out if that's an issue. I'm a software engineer, not very versed in EM interference, so I'm listing everything I can think of. I'm curious if the Wi-Fi pineapple or any part in the drone changes its behavior, i.e. increasing power or such, when it gets farther away and the possibility interferes with the antenna. I know the radio bands are all different, but we are dealing with very weak signals, aren't we? Or it could be the obvious one, A, the drone just happened to fly in front of one of those big microwave antennas, which is totally possible. Anyway, I hope you can experiment somewhere like in a nearby parking lot or yes. park and in find fact, out. In uh, fact, as far as like flying in front of those giant microwave antenna array things, um, essentially uh, the bandpass filter that I just spoke of would help right. in that instance. And also some of those are at crazy, like hundreds of watts, <laughs> like hundreds. So it's kind of crazy to think like our, our poor <laughs> little uh, pineapple there, just it didn't stand a chance. Poor pineapple. But we learned a lot. We did. Um, and, and to that effect, I wanted to uh, read John's email here. He says that I ran across the show a few days ago and just had a few minutes to watch the uh, one about the 400 foot quad antenna. Uh, first, awesome episode. You always learn more uh, from failure than from success. I know, I, I fail like all the time. I make it a That's point That's true, too. he does. Uh, we just don't always document all of it. Uh, second, I predict that when you test both parts of the antenna, when you get back, both of them will be electrically perfect. And yes, the antenna yeah. is great. There's nothing wrong with the antenna. That's true. Uh, so third, he's pretty sure that the problem wasn't a software or radio interference problem. Huh? Yeah, so he's quite convinced that I just rediscovered something that's common with this kind of radio setup and that it's documented and easily fixed and what? that I should be able to easily surpass the results we're seeing from the van antenna episode. So it turns out we don't have a ground at all. Really? Well, it's, well, I know when it flies, it's obviously not grounded, but... Right, because it's in the sky, and there's a way to uh, to fix this. Paul, can you pause for... Or don't pause the cameras. I have... I forgot poise. the name of the thing. What's the name poise. of the thing? Counterpoise. Counterpoise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you'll want to get uh, tight on this. Uh, or yeah. we can do it in B-roll. Yeah. Okay. So what we've done is actually added to... Here's our... Uh, or two-part coaxial collinear, okay. so two elements. Yeah. But this guy coming off the end, this little dongle here, this is actually a half wavelength. What? Uh, yeah, and it's, it's got a special name here. It's called a... Counterpoise. Uh, counterpoise, thank you. <laughs> Essentially, this is going to act as the ground because this will be way off the ground. Um, so weird. Yeah, and it is at a half wavelength. Oh. So since we were talking about 1090 megahertz, uh, that's 27 and a half centimeters. So this is half of that. And it's literally okay. just a pigtail. This is like what, 16 gauge? Yeah. No, this is, it's just 18 gauge wire that has been wow. soldered on to a circular connector and put in line with the SMA, uh, where the SMA reaches the um, F-type oh, adapter here. Oh, that's so here. funny. Yeah, it's just been screwed onto there. That's it. That's wow. all you need. And uh, that should serve, because a lot of times, okay what'll happen is your body, in fact, can act as that ground. So right. yeah. I'm learning a lot of really cool stuff here uh, as far as that's concerned. And that's one of the things that we'll be testing today because I think that make may make a huge difference. I think it will. Yes, and Yay. as such, we should probably get into the sky. Should we? Is there one so? more for this? I, I got one more. Okay, you want one me more. To go through it? Yes. Let's... All right, so this one is from Dick, who is apparently a ham. 
He said, just watched your last go at ADSB aircraft watching on top of the mountain. Your problems were caused by overloading the dongle. The dongles are by nature a very wide receiver, no front end filtering, etc. The top of a mountain is used for many different services, including 900 megahertz. I would have expected you to have all sorts of problems with everything from 120 megahertz to up to four gigahertz in that environment. You could, if you could find a place like your last one without the antenna farm, you could see many airplanes out of 275 miles or so. I have ADSB receiver at 50 feet here in Phoenix, Arizona. I see aircraft 200 miles away. One way to expand your distance would be to use something called a preamp. With the receiver inside the preamp box, the preamp uses an SAW filter, a SAW filter, yes. to keep the other signals from getting to the dongle while boosting the desired signal about 20 decibels away so give it a try we need to get some bandpass filters ah. and some and preamps because that's you're right it's, it's all about like getting better data into our dongle before we even start processing yes, any absolutely. of that stuff so this is something we're investigating and we'll come back to those okay so i guess today what we're doing is we've upgraded we're gonna fly our the ninja ground turtle. station it's not a ninja turtle it's this, a ninja turtle this, it's totally no 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 this is got a shell this is prototype in fact of it's a uh, pineapple drone stuff we're working with peter to, to build a uh, open source paparazzi based. Yes. Um, Wait, paparazzi? I hate paparazzi. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, Deal no, with you, those every these, day. This is a good paparazzi. This is a open source flight controller. Oh, okay. And as part of the series that we're currently in with Peter, uh, building an awesome, um, completely unmanned aerial system with autonomous features and such. Yes. Today I'm actually going to be flying all of this manually because all we're doing is lifting up our pineapple with our SDR, Sweet. with our coaxial collinear, now with our center. Help me out here. <laughs> counterpoise. Our counterpoise. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know, for some reason I'm blanking on that all day. Plus we have our uh, panel antennas pointed Wait. down to our ground station. So we should have a, a reliable link there. Okay. And yeah. So why don't we just go ahead and fire it up and see what okay. we can see. Let's do it. Do you remember your first domain name? Mine was gwdgames.com. I wanted gwd.com, but it was taken. We were the Great White Donut. We had a really awesome LAN party clan back in the 90s. It was, it was killer. It was rad. We played UT99. Anyway, that's not what's important. What's important is that you can snag yourself a killer domain name in no time at all over at domain.com because they've got that quick domain discovery system and an easy checkout process. And honestly, your website will be up and running in no time at all. I love Domain.com because it's affordable, it's reliable, it's easy to use, and they are so active on social media. It really makes it a fun place to do business. You can tweet at them. In fact, you can tweet at both of us. Tweet at, at Hack5Darren and at Domain.com and let us know your first domain name. Was it a 90s first person shooter clan? Anyway, the guys over at Domain.com, huge fans of Hack5, and so they want to hook you up with an extra 15% off. That's right, all you have to use is the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Use a flat cannon. All right, so drones powered on, pineapples up and running. Powered on? Yes, we have power. Main screen, turn on. So turned on. <laughs> and we're SSH'd into the pineapple. That's right. Yes. My heart. There we go. So uh, just make sure to point the Yagi in that direction. Point Yagi at. I mean, at, at enemy, there. yes. All right. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and do dump 1090. Right. Now we're so setting the gains sp specifically now. 49. Yes, because we what? don't want it to meander decibels. Decibels. Yeah. Yes. And then interactive, what is that? That's going to give us a readout. Now we could use the infusion, but again, we don't have internet access out here at the park, and so we don't have the nice pretty Google map to plot it all on. Uh, however, we will get like a nice little, it kind of looks like air dump. If you're familiar with that, like finding access points, except totally. instead of access points, we're talking about. Use air dump every day. Yes. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Enter. Hey, hey. We have three. Planes. Are those planes? Four. Yep, those okay. are planes. Now it's showing us all of. Yep. Let's give it a moment to normalize okay. while it's on the ground. Alright. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So we've waited a couple of minutes. We only see six planes. Okay. Let's Not see bad. if we go up, we get some more. All right. Time for me to aim and fire. Oh, I should probably turn this on. Hang on. Too bad there's not bullets in here, so I could be like pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. pew. There we are, Paul. So we've got quite a bit of payload on here, and I haven't really upgraded the battery system, so 
this is going to be a short flight, but I'll get us to pretty high altitude, which I can see in here. And, uh, and away we go. How are we looking, Shannon? Uh, looking good. More planes? Yeah. Just a few, but definitely a few more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six. Well, they didn't all disappear as soon as we... Uh... No, they didn't. We're holding steady. Nice. We're holding steady with the Yagi pointed straight at it. Okay, and... Still holding steady. We have about seven right now. Okay, and we're gonna have to bring it back at 200 feet. Okay. Yep. It's just way too windy up there right now. Hey, Paul, you wanna get this? It's coming down fast. Oh, that dog is totally gonna eat it. Look at the dogs. Oh. <laughs> I actually can't lift it any higher, Paul. I'm at max throttle. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're over the fence. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. There we go. This dog's got really excited. <laughs> All right. Wow, that went way quicker than I thought. So that was fun. That alarm you're hearing is, um, the Using battery all dying. Of the battery, yes. <laughs> so, lesson learned. All right, it's time cool. for an octocopter. Oh. We're just gonna fine. have to do that. Can we get one for dogs too? And we're gonna have to go with big props. <laughs> huh? So that was cool. So we we kept steady around uh, six to eight okay. airplanes. The so whole was time. it a noticeable improvement? I mean, um, it was noticeable in that we didn't just lose everything as soon as we any. shot into we, the sky. We continued to get the same amount, and it it was pretty steady the entire time. Okay, I think we've learned a few things, but I still want to put it on a bigger airframe. Yeah. Take it back to the same place. Yes. Learn, do a lot more maths, because we're going to need some of those. Bring a dog. Bring a couple of pups. Yeah. That would help. Yes. And then do it again in the same location with a bandpass filter. So we're going to okay. try to keep yeah. as many variables the same as, in fact, I was really surprised because this is actually a carbon fiber frame. Yeah. The carbon fiber has a tendency to absorb some of those radio signals we'd oh. like. Yeah, so I try to keep everything away from the frame as much as possible, I but see. still. Yeah. Okay, I would say in that it wasn't an epic failure, that it was a win, <laughs> but we definitely need to make some upgrades before I can confidently put this at 400 feet. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, also, I can't wait to do that. Also, need to take that off because I look crazy. <laughs> so. <laughs> All with the locals that, are staring at us. Yes. <laughs> with that, we would love to hear your feedback, and there's one place you can do it. It's either down below in the comments or feedback at hack5.org. And hack shop, h a k shop.com. Yeah, we've got things. all sorts of cool stuff, including the Realtek SDRs, and you we've can got. You build your own pineapple now. Oh, yeah, there's the pineapple configurator. So cool. As well as Hack RF. <gasps> which we're going to be getting what? into on the show. Wait, yeah. Mike just do we emailed. Have them? Yeah, Mike emailed me to just to let me know he just sent me one. So I've got. Yes. Yeah. Oh my that's god. That's going to be fun. That's um, going to be awesome. And what else? <laughs> oh, you should come to Tour Camp. Tourcamp.org. All I'm going to say is I had a almost a nearly geek spiritual experience there He's uh, two years ago, a little bit, and it was amazing. If you like camping, if you're into anything geekery related. You just, you can't find a more wholesome community and uh, I encourage everybody to go in and check out tourcamp.org because it, it's just, words can't describe it. I'll come up with some better words for next time, but essentially I will see you there and it is going to be epic. You're not going to want to miss this. I don't like going outside. Okay, well you can stay I'll here with your air conditioning, but yeah. And DEF CON, <laughs> where I can stay inside with yeah. this AC. Yeah, there's, there's less, there's, uh, anyway, good stuff. <laughs> no bugs. Right. Well. <laughs> There are bugs at Shmoocon, but they're not of the, never mind. <laughs> Different All right. story. I think that's about it. Yes, for that this does episode. wrap up this week's episode of Hack 5. Um, and without further ado, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Trust your techno lust. Pew 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 pew. pew.
So I heard a bird that was making that exact sound. What? Yeah. <laughs> it was the pew pew bird.